One of the commonly confused pairs of Echeverias is Echeveria chihuahuensis and the Echeveria colorata. I've got lots of friends who are confused by this and if you're not sure what I'm talking about, here's a closer look. To the left is a chihuahuensis, on the other side is a colorata. Both of these specimens are quite young and it is at this point that many people confuse the two. Please don't mind my colorata, it should be larger than this. But unfortunately, it got sunburned last summer and it was ravaged by insects. So for the most part, it is recovering right now. Let's have a closer look at the Chihuahuaensis. The Chihuahuaensis leaves would be described as acuminate, which means that it is tapering with a protruding point, or it could be mucronate, which means that it's abruptly ending in a mucro or a pointy tip. I find that this is the main tell of the Chihuahuaensis. In addition, the Chihuahuaensis also features a very dense rosette. It has a huge number of leaves given the small area that it occupies. And it doesn't get too big. I think the most I've seen is about 20 or 25 centimeters. But I think that's really pushing it. Here's what a more mature Chihuahuaensis looks like. If you look closely at the markings on the tip, it looks like it has talons or claws. And this lends it the nickname Cat's Claw. Now let's have a look at the Colorata. Now, the colorata has bigger leaves, which makes the rosette look crowded. In terms of leaf shape, it can be acute, which means it is tapering, or acuminate, which means that it is acute with a pointy protrusion at the tip. As a side note, you'll find this labeled as Echeveria colorata forma colorata, and you'll also see an Echeveria colorata linceana. They are essentially the same plant as far as classification is concerned. You might see some differences, very subtle differences in terms of leaf shape and color, but not enough variation to justify a separate subspecies or variety. To get a better understanding of the colorata as a species, I'll have to show you the other forms and varieties of the colorata. The first one you see here is a Mexican giant. It is the largest of the colorata bunch. It has a very thick farina. It tends to be pale, white, and shifts orange when it's stressed. Go check out this video to know what I was talking about back there. And the last form of colorata in my collection is the Brantii. And if you look closely at all of their leaves, they have the same basic shape. It's acute, so it goes pretty much straight, then tapers off gradually. This is not like the Chihuahuensis, which tends to be more mucronate than acuminate, where the leaves go wide, then abruptly ends. You could say that the differences between the two would be a lot like the Black Knight and the Black Prince. Go check out this video to see what I'm talking about. I think to give you a better idea of the Colorata, I would need to show you a mature version. Here's a more mature Vinciana. And I've got a leaf right here. As you can see, the leaf is mostly straight and it tapers gradually until it reaches the very end. Now the key to recognizing the differences between these two species is knowing the difference between acuminate and mucronate. Now allow me to show you more examples of acuminate and mucronate plants. Armed with this new knowledge, it will be a lot easier for you to tell apart these two species. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit like and subscribe to my channel. That way, you get notified of more Seriscapedia videos. You could also check out my vlog, that's Let's Plant, and it comes out every Tuesday morning, my time, or Saturday evening, Eastern Time. This has been Seriscapedia. I'm doing my research, so you don't have to.